I have to say, this is not at all how I expected this poll to go. Hello all the crazy people out there, my name is Michael, I like wizards and dragons and making games, and it is time to start working on another follow-along game dev series. Back in December, I posted a poll on my YouTube channel regarding uh, which kind of game you all would like to see me make next, and I was expecting there to be a little bit of a, a little bit, a little bit of contention between a 3D Zelda-like and a top-down RPG, and that was not the case at all. Within like 15 minutes, it was pretty clear who the winner was going to be, and really the results didn't change a whole lot after that. If anything, I, I didn't expect the, uh, the baseball game idea to get like any votes at all, but there was more competition between that and the top-down RPG than there was between the Zelda-like and the top-down RPG. Now, um, I may have uh, added a little bit of unnecessary confusion to the mix by at some point calling this a 3D platformer. Uh, the game that I have in mind does have like platforming elements, but it's not going to be primarily a 3D platformer, uh, the way that the Super Mario 64s or Sunshines or um, even something like a, like a Spyro the Dragon sort of thing. Um, we are making a game that is a lot like a 3D Zelda. We are going to make a game that's a lot like the, uh, the early PC Harry Potter games. And I hope that wasn't, like, excessively confusing to anyone. Um, I also posted a, uh, a Mira poll on my, on my Patreon to basically allow people to vote twice, um, if they are patrons. And as it turns out, that doesn't really affect the results any because, um, they're pretty much the same. Uh, the only things that changed were that uh, a baseball game actually came in above a top-down RPG on Patreon, which is unexpected. There is a uh, there is a pretty clear winner here. So this is the uh, this is the episode zero. This is the week zero. This is where I'm going to sort of explain and project manage uh, what I'm going to be doing for the next two-ish years. God, it feels really weird to say that out loud. And what better place is there to start with that than the matter of the actual uh, project management software that I'll be using? So there are a bunch of ideas tossed around. Uh, you can see some in the YouTube comments, you can see some in the Patreon comments. I should probably, is this public? Now that it's over, I should probably like, um, make this public too. Um, the one that I decided to go with is called Codex. Um, it's, I suppose if I have to compare it to something, it's sort of like Hack and Plan in that it's gamed towards, it's geared towards game design. And it leans a little bit harder into the, like the gaming metaphor. Uh, which I have some mixed feelings about. I think in some ways the metaphor is sort of gets in the way of um, of the actual productivity. But regardless, uh, the way that Codex is set up is that you have a bunch of uh, tasks which are called cards, and you can organize them into decks. You can put them in your hand if you're working with multiple people on your team. Um, you can put them into multiple people's hands, and you can assign them. You can uh, give them a status like um, being worked on, uh, complete, um, being blocked by another task. And you can shuffle things around, uh, apologies for the on-brand on pun, um, as, as you go along. And of course, there is a section of, uh, of milestones. And you can, uh, you can have deadlines which, which you can try to meet. Um, it also appears to allow, and this is how it differs a little bit from Hack and Plan in a rather important way, but uh, Codex appears to allow you to make boards publicly visible, which means that I can actually put a link to, um, not not this deck itself, but to a like public version of this deck in the video description so you guys can actually like look at it more closely um, as we go along uh, Which is a big plus and is there anything else? So um You have all the usual attributes of a, of a task card You have the priority you have the amount of work. It's gonna be you have the deadline and that sort of thing um, I'm sure I'm gonna talk more about this uh, as we go so how this is actually going to work, uh, I'm going to, instead of breaking this, this whole game up into, I think it was just like three and a half um, sprints slash milestones from um, from Bombardier, I've broken it up into a lot more, and they'll hopefully not last quite as long as the, uh, the milestones in Bombardier did, because those did feel like they started to go nowhere after a while, or uh, buggy as hell rather. Uh, Bombardier, the whole thing felt like it was going nowhere because there were no milestones, and it was just done when it was done. Uh, but I've split it up into things like basic 3D rendering, so just getting something on the screen, basic gameplay, uh, magic gameplay. Uh, I believe I said this earlier, but in the vein of the early PC Harry Potter games, uh, the Legend of Zelda like tools and, and whatever, uh, those are going to be magic spells. And I will comment further on that at the end of the video. Other like structural things, game state and inventory, magic interactions, so things that actually interact with magic spells. Um, arguably, I could put these in the reverse order, but... Um, this whole plan is at least somewhat malleable and subject to change, although I just hope it won't change too much. Um, NPC and character interactions, uh, combat and hazards, uh, however much of that there's going to be. I feel like, I'm, and I'm pretty sure I'm in the minority on this, but I feel like combat is like 
the least interesting part of making games. But regardless, I will shoot to have some of that in the game. Um, game menus, uh, game world and game state, so like save it, saving and loading the game and that sort of thing, title screen, and uh, I have not planned out story and level design. This is probably going to be like largely done on a live stream. Um, I tried not to make too many concrete plans the further out we go, uh, because for example, the, the um, I'm not expecting to have these done for quite a while. I tried to be a little bit pessimistic um, as far as milestones go, uh, like how, how long I expect milestones to take, partially because I want to leave a buffer for bug fixes, uh, for periodic bug fixes, and partially because like I want the milestones to be like, if you're not done by now, you're in serious trouble, and it's better to move a milestone forward than it would be to move it back. Just like based on how I've, how I've worked on these things in the past. So if I'm going to break this down a little bit further, uh, we have the basic 3D camera setup. This isn't going to be anything super exciting. I am going to be using a bunch of, well, maybe not a, a lot, but a number of systems that I've built for things in the past because I really don't feel like doing things like writing lighting shaders for the 500th time. Um, so I'm going to uh, set up a basic 3D camera. I'm going to um, import the uh, 3D models with this here, this here program that I made called Penguin. Uh, this just basically arranges a bunch of 3D shapes into um, like basically vertex buffers for Game Maker. And that is just going to allow me to import uh, 3D vertex buffers in just like one call instead of having to deal with like OBJ importers or all that awful, awful nonsense. Um, I'm realizing that not all of these have a, a deadline assigned and they probably should. Um, yeah, each of these cards, by the way, have a, um, or most of the cards anyway, have uh, a short description and or a checklist on them. Um, also of note is going to be either Luminous Chickens or another like pre-made 3D lighting system because again, as stated, I really don't feel like writing 3D lighting sh shaders for the hundredth time and also I want to emphasize that uh, using code that already has been written in games is good because that means you don't have to spend a great deal of time reinventing the wheel. Um, there's going to be some other things. I'm going to try and get like audio and video settings in the game earlier than before. Um, so that I just don't have to go back and like retrofit a bunch of stuff later. I recently made a set of videos on deferred rendering and I'm probably going to be like, unless I change my mind at the last minute, probably going to be um, having deferred rendering going on in here. I'm not planning on making maps for this game world huge the way that um, you often see in games that lend themselves well to deferred rendering. But um, I do possibly plan on having a lot of... Um, a lot of lights active in scenes at once, and that is something that also gets a bit of a benefit from deferred rendering. And I'm also tossing around the idea of getting getting some SSAO in, um, in this game, although that's going to be quite a bit more work, and I'm not convinced yet that it's going to really be a benefit to this game, and I don't want to make it drag out for even longer. So that's going to be on the nice-to-have list down at the bottom over there. Um, <clears throat> as far as basic gameplay goes, we're going to need to be able to give the player the ability to do things such as jump and run around and collide with walls and that sort of thing. And conveniently, um, as of my speaking, I am wrapping up a two-year series on 3D collisions in Game Maker. And if all goes well, I should just be able to take that system, drop it into this game, and have 3D collisions in Game Maker without having need for any like external um, DLL extensions or anything like that. And if I set it up right, it should perform reasonably well. This is also where I'm going to start getting something resembling an entity to loop into the game. Um, so, like, game objects in physical space, uh, solids, players, NPCs, monsters, that sorts of thing, they are going to be able to, um... They're going to exist in the game as, as game maker objects, basically. Uh, we're going to be doing some state machines with uh, this extension called Snow State, which, um... Basically, it takes all the annoying parts of writing a state machine yourself and does it for you, um, as a good extension should. And that's going to be useful for both things such as uh, AI and just like player states in general. And lastly, and this is the, uh, this is probably the biggest outstanding question in this whole thing, is how are we going to create 3D scenes? And my answer to that is,
So I basically just wrote like a compiler script in Unity, uh, which will iterate over objects in like a Unity scene and just export the positions and transformations and what models and textures and stuff they use to just a file uh, that can be read by GameMaker. Uh, the biggest question with using Unity to create 3D scenes for GameMaker is actually whether or not it's allowed by the terms of service. I did read through the terms of service of Unity, and as far as I can tell, the only thing that it mentions that's related to this is, like, don't use Unity to create another game engine that you can, like, sell and stuff, hey. uh, which I'm not doing. I'm just using this as an extension for, for my own project. Just to err on the side of caution, I will not be distributing the code for exporting a Unity scene. I will just obviously include the code for importing it. And I will, like, describe the spec and stuff, so if you want to use your own um, external 3D level editor, all you need to do is make sure that it can spit out a file in, in the format that I specify. Anyway, moving on. Um, I'm going to start trying to go through this quickly because I don't want this video to be 45 minutes long. Uh, magic gameplay, this is going to be basically creating a set of spells that we can use. Some of them are um, basically copped from either Wizard Ducks, which is the... Uh, game that I'm making right now that I'm spending a little bit more time on, or they're going to be based on spells that are in the Potter games. Um, these are the ones I'm going to aim for actually getting in. Uh, some of them may or may not end up on the cutting room floor if, like, time becomes a problem. Uh, game state and inventory, this is going to be simple. We're not going to have an RPG list of, like, 500,000 items that you can collect. Uh, we're just basically going to have a currency stat, um, a quest system, which I'm counting, and game state and inventory, even though some people might consider it to be separate and a, uh, a list of collectible cards, which is also something that is borrowed from uh, the early Potter games and Wizard Ducks. This game is going to share a fair amount of DNA with Wizard Ducks, although I don't think it's going to actually share any, like, code directly. Um, magic Interactions. This is an incomplete list. I'm hoping that I'll be able to get, like, once I start making items and objects that you can interact with in the game world, that um, creating them will be quite a bit faster. Creating them won't take quite as much time. NPCs and Characters. This is self-explanatory. What adventure game, after all, is uh, complete without an NPC system in it? Uh, Cutscenes, so when you talk to NPCs and also when you do other things in the game in which you need to do things like uh, show a message or have scripting happen. Uh, combat and hazards. So this is going to be both having um, like enemies like attack you, uh, which is also a bit of an, a thing that's still up in the air, and actually uh, keeping track of like the internal model of um, player health and player status and all that. Uh, as this card says, I'm going to leave ideas for enemies up to you all. So if you've got, so if you all have any fun ideas for enemies, uh, you can chat them out, and we may we may get to them. Um, I of course also have some ideas for enemies that are bouncing around in my head that I, I um, haven't quite decided on yet. Uh, menus. I'm almost certainly going to also import a um, a menu system that I've already written. I guess this will be like lifted directly from from Wizard Ducks, just because it's. Creating menus in Game Maker, um, unless like the new UI features that are on the roadmap right now come out between now and then, creating UI in Game Maker really is a chore, and it's really not that much fun, and it's really not that interesting. And I have a menu system that I spent a lot of time on a few months ago that does the job, and I'm probably just going to uh, bounce off of that. Um, aside from that, we have a whole list of a whole list of uh, different menus that we'll need to make. Uh, that's probably going to be again a bit of a chore. Uh, and making sure that they all are like on the screen in the correct place. Uh, game world and game state. Getting games like this to save in a one effective, two way that like isn't prone to breaking, and three uh, fast manner is deceptively hard. While I can't lift this character directly from something like Wizard Ducks, I do have some ideas for how I want this to work and how I can do this relatively painlessly. Uh, title screen. Technically, this maybe should go in the like the menu section up there, but title screens aren't really that important during development, so I, I kind of put it off for, for later. And story and level design. Uh, this is the last, um, the last milestone that I planned out. Uh, as you can see, I just dumped like a large number of effort points into it, and I'm just going to say, like, we'll figure this out. Uh, this is probably going to be done over the course of multiple live streams. Um, I did level design for previous games during live streams just because it's a little less boring like that. And there's almost certainly going to be a uh, significantly significantly more of it uh, this time around than last time. So instead of maybe like three two-hour live streams, it's probably going to be more like five or six, four or five-hour live streams, um, if I had to guess. And then, of course, I have no current plans for the story. I'm sure I'll think of something between now and a year from now. Um, it's probably going to be silly because I'm incapable of writing serious things. 
and um, we'll, we'll play that by ear too. Um, there's also the uh, the bugs panel, and obviously there isn't anything in this yet because I don't have any game, and if you don't have a game, you arguably can't have bugs. Um, there will be eventually, and some uh, some nice to haves. I might move other cards here as we go. I might think of other things that might be nice to have if there's time. I'm sure this is going to fill up too. And there are some things that are obviously going to come after this. There's going to be the matter of like a more rigorous testing for the game, trying to see if I can like find sequence breaks and that sort of thing. Um, there's going to be uh, releasing the game, uh, which was an entire multiple week ordeal with the previous games that I've made. Um, but I don't want to. I don't want to plan stuff out that far ahead um, without seeing how the the main game's development goes first. So uh, that's the plan. Um, for this, uh, this Wizard School game, I will have a link to, I believe, how do I, like, how do I find that? Um, man, there was something that let me, like, okay, I think here it is. You can, you can grab a public link to this project, and you should be able to view what's going on in it. Um, without having to be signed in. And if you do sign into Codex, um, I think I think it said you can like vote on vote on things like you can upvote cards, like give this priority or that kind of thing. And I, I may or may not remember to look at those um, as we go. I'm probably, I'm gonna try to work on this a few weeks ahead of when the videos are actually going out, um, just so that I have a backlog so, to, so that if something takes more time than I thought it would, I, I'm, I'm not like scrambling to get something together. Oh, do I have to check this box? I might have to check that box. Make comments public. All right, that's probably a good idea for a, for a project like this. Anyway, lastly on the development side, uh, Codex does have a, um, oh man, I just saw a, a metrics, like project metrics that you can look at. And crucially, and this is something that I wish Hack and Plan had in the free tier, but it doesn't, uh, you have to pay Hack and Plan if you want access to this. Um, it features a burndown chart, which is a visual graph of how many, like how much work there is left to do in the project and how that hopefully decreases over time. Um, and you can project like if you get, for example, like eight points of work done um, a week, which I think for this project is a little bit optimistic because the uh, the scale that Hack and Plan uses to, I mean, the scale that Codex uses to assign effort points on cards is uh, a little bit different than Hack and Plan's. If I say that I expect five effort points to get done a week, this is uh, how long it projects it to take. Obviously, I hope it's not quite that long. Uh, 2025 is pretty far away. It's possible that to make this go a little bit faster, I might set up like a, an extra Patreon goal for like if um, I had a certain amount of like pledges uh, per month on, on Patreon, I'll put out two of these a week instead of one. And then we can uh, make it go a little faster. All right, anything else? Um, I don't think so. Uh, lastly, because I know this is an inevitable subject of conversation that's going to come up, the game known as Hogwarts Legacy is going to come out probably about a week after this video goes up. And this is going to be the first and last time that I acknowledge that game in this in the series. Most of you by now are probably aware of the controversy that surrounds that game, and I'm not going to tell you that you should or shouldn't play it. Uh, that's your business, but I will ask you all not to bring it up in the comments of these videos. I will be talking about the earlier Potter games quite a bit, and I'll probably be showing footage and possibly even playing some of them on, on video uh, to illustrate things that I'm trying to do in this game. If you all want to think about this as a wizard school game which is not financially tied to the transphobic agenda, then you're more than welcome to do that, but um, I've been wanting to make a game like this since pretty much I started doing game dev. Arguably Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets for the PC is the reason why I am interested in game dev. and. Trying to directly compete with or show up the current Wizard game really is not part of the plans for this, nor should it be. And more than anything else, I really don't want to give you-know-who even more free attention than she already doesn't deserve. So, after this conversation, the only part of games that exist are the first three on the PC. And possibly the first three on the GameCube. So on that cheerful subject, episode one of this series is going to go up on Wednesday. We are going to be getting some basic 3D camera stuff set up. Possibly some rendering stuff too, depending on how quickly I can get that done. Links to all of the relevant things that I mentioned, including the project's GitHub, uh, as soon as I actually get that up, uh, can be found in the video description. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute to the channel, links to that can be found around as well. Otherwise, I try to post about two game dev videos a week, one of these and one tutorial tutorial. I hope you all enjoy this, and I will see you all later. 
Shouldn't you be in class, uh, Mr. Potter? Special thanks to Army Armbuster, DJ Gibbles, Edward Holt, Game Maker, Harold Gidry, Kiexi, Manta Ray, Sindra Larson, Square Crow, The Oz, V V, and Zengimans for supporting these videos. If you want to support the channel, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.